Go ahead. Uh, the tropical dry forest is located in Central America, India, parts of South America, and parts of Africa. Although these places are in the same biome, the geography varies. So, for example, in southern Mexico, there are mangrove forests and steep ridges. But in central India and Indochina, there are mountain ranges. Um, the average temperatures in these regions are high, averaging about 65 degrees Fahrenheit. In addition, the tropical dry forest experiences a seven-month wet season and a five-month dry season. In the northern hemisphere, the month of May acts as both the end of the dry season and is also the wettest month of the year. During this time, the tropical dry forest experiences about 200 centimeters of rainfall. During the rainy season is when productivity is the highest and during the dry season, the trees lose their leaves, so transpiration is lower. If they do not evolve, this adaptation, evaporation rates would exceed precipitation rates. Um, rainfall increases around April and May and drops again around October and November, showing the beginning and end of the wet season. Brazil is in the southern hemisphere, so the May to November wet season doesn't apply here. However, we can see that precipitation picks up significantly around November and continues until about March and April, which we would normally be the dry season in the northern hemisphere, but is the wet season in the southern hemisphere. Uh, geography of a region can play a role in the wet and dry seasons. For example, Brazil and Indo India have different locations in geography, and Brazil's dry season is a lot drier than India's. Both receive have several hundreds of centimeters of rain per year, but Brazil gets a lot more in a shorter amount of time. So, due to the high percentage of humidity that's in these areas, uh, there's a lot of humidity in the soil because of the dramatic uh, shift between uh, dry and wet seasons that happens within one month. The dramatic shift causes it to be very humid within the soil. Uh, the soil doesn't have the ability to hold a lot of plant life or nutrients or water, so plants have adapted to this. Uh, also, the soils, sorry, also, the soils uh, are rich in nutrients because they tend to be slashed and burned by people who have to come into the area by chopping down the trees. The soil, it's used, the soil is used as farmland, and they're often composed of red sandy soils, red loamy soils, and black soils. Uh, the types and orders usually vary, but are mainly oxazoles, mollusols, and versols. And next is the Florida and their adaptations. Alright, this flower is the royal creeper and it has adapted by being able to draw uh, a lot of the nutrients out of the soil even though it has a lot. It doesn't go as deep as I mentioned with the other biomes that have that fertile soil. This is another example of flora. Uh, another adaptation that this and many other plants have is that they shed their leaves during the long dry season because they're not really useful because you don't have enough water to support this plant. So there's no really use to keeping the leaves around if you can't do anything with them. Another example of an adaptation that most plants have are waxy leaves, is that during these long dry seasons, uh, the wax on the outside help uh, keep the stomas closed, so that way they're not expelling any excess water that they may lose due to the dry season. Alright, and next on to the animals. There are uh, a wide array of animals that live in this area. Uh, 
examples of the large mammals that live there are the white rhino, uh, giraffe, and the Asian elephant. Uh, some smaller mammals that live here are monkeys, jaguars, deer, deer squirrels, and rodents such as the giant jumping rat. Just seen there. Uh, it's about the size of a rabbit, as you can see. It also has a lot of birds in this environment, and most of them are endangered. Uh, because of the warm climate, a lot of uh, reptiles live here. There are many endangered species that live here, including the a type of tortoise and the Komodo dragon. Other examples of animals. Uh, major human interference is, of course, talking about earlier the slashing and burning. How we learned within tropical rainforests is that you cut down the trees to get to the soil, but the trees hold most of the nutrients that you need to grow crops. So after they cut down these trees, they can't use the soil, so they have to go in and cut down more trees which just leads to a cycle of soil being bad and cutting down more trees. And another <coughs> example of this is the um, endangered animals that live there because humans come in and they kill these species. This is the tropical grasslands or the savannas. Uh, it's located near the equator, um, also found in South America in Brazil, Colombia, and Venezuela. It's found in large parts of Africa, stretching from the west to the east, um, large parts of India and northern Australia. Uh, the tropical grasslands have very high temperatures, uh, usually not going below 64 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, they're typically very dry, but have a season of heavy rain, including anywhere from 20 to 50 inches. Uh, the season of rain lasts about six to eight months, followed by a heavy season of drought. Um, like I just mentioned, the savannas have a period of rainfall lasting 50 to 75 percent of the year, and then followed by a period of drought. If they had rainfall all throughout the year, then it could easily become a tropical uh, rainforest instead of a tropical grassland. Uh, some savannas develop because of their soil. For example, an adaphic savanna is on a hill where there is a thin layer of soil or there is clay that gets waterlogged. Uh, this is an example of the climatograph where um, from May to November is the wet season and that has heavy drought from about January to April. And this is in Costa Rica. And in another area in Kenya, this doesn't follow the November to May wet season, but has heavy drought from, from around June to October. Um, uh, the tropical grassland soil has large pores and therefore drains water very quickly, causing the soil to have poor fertility. The top layer has a thin layer of humus holding organic material and nutrients, but overall the soils are very deep, highly weathered, uh, very low in organic material and nutrients. And the layers are formed because the top layer loses elements by draining to the layer below. And the soil order is mollusols because of its dark surface horizon, annual deposit of organic materials, and its heavy dry season. Uh, the flora in the tropical grasslands are tall, dense grasses and shrubs. South America has water lilies and cattail ad reeds. Africa has acacia trees, as shown in the picture. Uh, Asia has shrubs and is known for its isolated trees. Adaptations include long, re long roots to reach the water table during the drought thick bark to resist the fires during the drought, and trunks that can easily store water. Uh, in South America, there are seed-eating birds, um, hundreds of different types of fish, 
in Africa there are rabbits, antelopes, zebras, giraffes, um, horses. Australia has kangaroos and parrots, hundreds of species of birds and fish. Adaptations include migrating during the drought to get water. Other animals such as elephants uh, have the strength to tear open trees to get water during the drought. And then other animals um, are able to run very quickly in case there's a fire. Um, human interactions and inter interferences include poaching, overgrazing, clearing the land for crops, and converting the land for agriculture and urban development. And our final one is the Brio Forest, uh, the Tega, which is like the Russian name for it, and the Northern Carnivorous Forest, which are all the same thing, but just with various names. Uh, this is located in the northern part of the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, it's mainly found in uh, North America and Asia, at the very, very top. In North America, it spans all the way from Alaska to Newfoundland all the way across and makes up a majority of uh, Canada's area. And it also makes up a large part of uh, Russia, and it also spans from Russia all the way to Norway. A uh, majority of the year is spent in winter. Uh, when it becomes uh, summertime, the ground becomes very uh, marshy and moist because of the large build up of water during these winter months. Uh, the temperatures during winter can range from negative 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 30 degrees. And during the short summer, they can go anywhere from 20 degrees Fahrenheit to 70. Uh, in this place, it's either hot and humid or it's dry and cold. There's really no in between. Autumn and spring are basically non-existent. Uh, it rains anywhere from 12 to 33 inches annually, and most of the rain occurs during the summer where a lot of the water becomes built up and then it freezes in the winter when the short summer ends. And this can be seen in the first uh, graph, uh, Ottawa, Canada, which is a lot of these places that are on there, they're on the outer edge, not farther up, because a lot of it is too cold and it's not really inhabited. So as you can see, the uh, rainfall increases during June, July, August, which is the summer months when the temperature goes up, although it's not very much of a range. And this is the picture of Ottawa, Canada. And the next is uh, Moscow. It's not Moscow, that's the wrong name for it. And then you can see the same thing that happened. As the temperatures go up in June, July, and August, so does the rainfall. All right, so the physical environment is very, of course, foresty. It's a carnivorous forest. Uh, towards the southern regions of the biome, it's more swampy, swampy, because of it's warmer there. So the water is going to be melted and make that marsh environment. Uh, also throughout the entire biome, it's uh, many marshes, wetlands, and shallow lakes. Uh, but also uh, mosses and mosses tend to definitely uh, be located there because of the damp environment. The soils there are very, very acidic, especially on the top layers because due to the cold temperatures, there really is no time for decomposition to occur. And when the trees lose their leaves or their pine needles, as a lot of the trees are, there's no decomposition. They just basically either decomp a little or they just remain on the surface. And most of them are pine needles, so they call cause the soil to be acidic. Okay, flora. Uh, a lot of the trees that are there are conifers. They're pine, evergreen, spruce, and fir. And most of them have uh, wax-covered leaves or pine needles to hold in water. Uh, a lot of, around the marshes, uh, there's moss, cotton, grass, and a lot of other trees that are able to survive in that damp environment and thrive there. The animals that live there, black bears are common along with snowshoe hares and lynxes. They have wide feet that allow them to stand on the snow during the winter time. Uh, caribou are also found there, along with mooses. Uh, Seed-eating birds are there year-round because there's a lot of trees so they can get what they need. Um, there's not much human impact in the nor northern part of it, except for a few native peoples. 
Uh, however, the voting of dams in Canada have begun to change the ecosystem. It also is viewed as a high mineral area, so people can go in and start mining, which is a concern. And also they have begun to go in and start deforestation because they see there's a lot of trees there. However, due to the cold climate, it's hard for the trees that are there to grow back. And that's the end. <laughs>